let me start with the topic for today so today's class is uh, as i told you the subject is basics of design basics of design discusses or covers some techniques which you have to make use of to make a beautiful design now if when you become architects after five years uh, in future what would be your work it would be mainly working on designing of various places it could be in design of interiors it could be design of buildings it could be design of heritage structures from conservation point of view it could be design of landscape landscape architecture so the basis uh commonality across the fields of architecture is design now when you design something there are some principles which you need to take care of so basics of design is a subject where we'll cover those principles of design there are two two subtopics under principles or the, under basics of design principles of design which we are covering today this will be a two-hour class uh, where we will discuss on all the principles of design and the second subject or second topic under the subject of basics of design is color theory. Now, these are the two topics which we cover under basics of design. That is the reason I told you we will do it in two classes today and tomorrow. Uh, today, we are covering principles of design. Tomorrow, we will focus mainly on color theory and we will schedule practice sessions also. Uh, uh, for each of these topics and also uh, when you get access to your study material once you download your uh, a mobile application you also will be given the study material for this subject uh, in that subject also you have the same chapters chapter one would be principles of design you can study that after after the class uh, the second one would be color theory third subject third topic in the uh, book would be uh, how are these principles and color theory used in design how are they used in logo design? How are they used in uh, uh, UI UX design, user interface design? How are they used in t-shirt designing? So uh, application of design in various mediums. That would be the third chapter. That is not something which is tested in the exam directly, but these are the two main areas we'll cover for now. Principles of design, color theory. So the first class for that is today, it, we are focusing on principles of uh, design. So as I told you, principles of design are a set of principles which we make use of to get a beautiful design. The other word which we technically use from architecture's point of view or design point of view is aesthetic. An aesthetic design is something which is good to look at. It is beautiful to look at. A composition which is beautiful or aesthetic achieve an aesthetic design or a beautiful design you have to make use of some principles so that is what we are focusing in this lecture now there are multiple principles first we'll focus on an under, uh, understanding those basic principles uh, towards the end once we discuss i'll also tell you a shortcut how to remember because uh, when you go and study principles of design at various online sources or any books it will create a lot of confusion in your mind how to remember all these so there's a trick also to remember all these principles of design. Uh, so I'll also give you, uh, I'll also tell you uh, the trick and all how to how to remember and how to uh, uh, use these principles in your exam. Now, how are these tested? Is how which type of questions are asked in the exam? In Nata generally, uh, you get these multiple select questions where they give you an image, and then they give you some options below it. You need to select the relevant options. So the question would generally be identify the principles of design which you can see in this image. So you need to tick or select those options which which are all seen in this image. So to answer such questions, these are scoring and three mark questions in Nata generally. So to score well in such questions, you have to have a good understanding of all the principles of design. So that said, so, uh, uh, as an introduction, let us move on and understand the principles of design starting with the first. So if I show you these two images, so there are two images here. You can see number one, number two over here. If I show you both these images and if I ask you which uh, one you think is a balanced one, where do you see uh, uniformity and balance in the composition? 
which composition can you call a balanced composition? Anyone tell me? Can anyone answer? You can use the chat box to answer or uh, to reply to the questions. Obviously, number one. Number one is a balanced composition. So the first principle of design is what you can see from these images. That is balance. The first principle of design is balance. Now, what is balance? Balance is basically a uniform distribution of visual weight in a comp. I'll give you the definition. We'll understand in a better manner. There are various types of balance, balance too. We'll also understand them. But to just give you a very brief idea, balance is basically uniformity in design. There should be a uniformity. Everything should be uniformly distributed. For example, in the first image, if I draw a line in the center, there is equal distribution on both sides of the line. If I do the same thing in the second image, that there is no equal distribution on the on both the half. This left half, there is lot of elements present on the right side. Right side, you only have a small element present. So the balance in the composition is not seen. Balance is the first principle of design, which talks about uniformity uniform distribution in a composition is called as balance so that's the first principle uh, you get questions in the exam where uh, sometimes they will give you an image and tell you what is seen in this image you have to identify it can be mcq or a multiple select question too so be clear with your concept of what is balance balance is basically uniform distribution of visual weight so you can make a, a note on the definition of what is balance in your notes balance is basically Uniform distribution of uniform distribution of visual weight. Uniform distribution of visual weight along a point or an axis. Along a point or an axis. Axis or a point. If you put a point or if you draw an axis. There should be equal distribution along that axis. The axis can be a horizontal axis, a diagonal axis, or a vertical axis too. So uniform distribution about an axis or about a point, that is called as balance in design. So even in these images too, the first and second, if you see, first one has a balanced composition. There is no uniformity in size of these blocks. But if you draw a line, for instance, the weight which you see, the visual weight which you see, that is balanced. Or you, you may not draw a horizontal line always, I told you. It can also be a diagonal one. So if you draw a diagonal line through this composition, the visual weight, the amount of black space, black shape which you have on both the sides of the axis, that is balanced in the composition. Here, you see a lot of open white space here, right? So it is not a balanced. Balance in a composition is where the complete available space has a uniformity in distribution of the elements or the visual weight. Now, what is visual weight? We'll look into that uh, in detail in a while or, and understand what exactly is visual weight and how is it controlled in design. Uh, because when you attend these 50 mark questions in JE paper 2, you have to use colors and textures and uh, shading techniques. So, uh, which we will all be taught to you in the sketching classes. But for now, you need to have an idea of how to control visual weight of elements in design. So we'll try to understand that. So as, as I already gave you the definition of what is balance, balance in design is uniformity in distribution of uniform, the uh, uniformity in distribution of visual weight is called as uniform distribution, visual weight. Visual weight is something which you have to understand and know in a better manner now before that even in these compositions you can see in the first composition there is a lot of white space there is no uniformity throughout the composition but in the second even though the uh, hexagons are of different sizes there is a uniformity in terms of distribution that is called as balance this composition can be called as a balanced composition here there is imbalance in the composition be clear in your mind that balanced composition does not necessarily mean if I draw a line, it is not necessary that left side should exactly be equal to right side. Left side may not exactly be equal to the right side, but the visual weight of the left side, left side, visual weight of left side should be equal to the visual weight of right side. Not only left and right, whatever axis or point you're taking under consideration along that point of point or axis, 
the visual weight should be balanced, not the exact thing, but the visual weight should be same. Now that let us try to understand on visual weight and then we'll come to different types of balance. Now there are three types of balance in design. You have symmetrical balance, asymmetrical balance, and radial balance. We'll try to understand those three different types of balances and we practice some questions too. But before that, let us try to understand what is visual weight because the complete concept of balance is based on the concept of visual weight. You're essentially uniformly distributing visual weight. Now let us try to understand what is this visual weight. Visual weight is basically the importance which you give to an element in design. If you have some element, any element, it can be a square, a box, a star, a circle, any object or any element in a composition. The importance which you give to it, that is called as visual weight. The weightage you give to it is called as visual weight. We call it as visual weight because it is because of what you see. With your, uh, the, the, what you perceive after uh, having a vision of it, right? It's called, it's called as visual weight. Now, there are lots of factors. Visual weight depends on multiple factors, starting with firstly color. Uh, or can you can you tell me from the uh, two boxes? There are two rectangles in the image over here. That is a first rectangle and a second rectangle. Number one, number two. Can you tell me which one has more visual weight? Which rectangle? Or both are equal? Can you tell me are they equal or if there is more visual weight in one rectangle, can you tell me which one? One or two. Obviously the first rectangle. The first rectangle has a more visual weight because it is dark in color. So generally lightness or darkness also is a factor. So there are multiple factors which will define visual weight. The first one is color. Let us try to go through all these concepts of what all affect the visual weight of an object or an element. Firstly, color influences visual weight. Now, uh, for your difference, a, a table is given over here, which tells you about the weight of colors. Generally, red color is perceived to be the heaviest color and uh, the, weight, uh, the weight of the visual weight reduces in this order. So the heaviest is red, then you have blue, green, orange, and the lightest color is yellow. You can also put a given. This is the heaviest color. This is the lightest color in this scale. So the weightage of the visual weight of color uh, can be attributed based on the scale, considering red as the heaviest and yellow as the lightest color. So uh, you'll understand in detail about color when we do tomorrow's class, which is based specifically on color theory. There are concepts which you have to know with respect to color, how to use color in compositions. So that is something which we'll have a dedicated class on that is tomorrow. But for now, uh, visual weight changes with color, that is number one. Number two is contrast. Actually, contrast, lightness and darkness both are interrelated, somewhat interrelated. Contrast also has a influence on visual weight. I have an example over here, you can see. This is number one, this is number two. If you see, there is a square over here in both the, in both the diagrams, you have a square drawn. The square which you have in both these diagrams is actually of same color. This, this square and this square is actually of same color. But uh, where do you see the visual weight to be more? Can anyone tell me? In, in the first and second composition, where do you see more visual weight to the square? The first one. Why? Because there is a contrast. There is a difference between the shade. This is very light. This is very dark. So there is a higher contrast here. So when the contrast is more, that also increases the visual weight. The same shade, the same square, when it is placed over here, its visual weight is reducing. There is nothing which is changing in the square actually. The shade is same, the, the size is also same, but the visual weight is reducing from here to here. How is it reducing? Just because of the background. Just by changing the color of the background, the visual weight is reducing. Why? because there is a reduction in the contrast. So contrast also adds to the visual weight. When the contrast is more, visual weight will also be higher. So contrast and lightness and darkness also is a factor. Lightness and darkness we have just discussed. This is very dark and so it has a higher visual weight compared to this because this is very light in its shade. So color, contrast, lightness and darkness. Then you have size which also impacts the visual weight. 
You can uh, look into this very simple example. Say this is A and this is B. Can you tell me which one has more visual weight? 